Okay, hello and welcome my friends. We are here in the draft of G2 versus T1 EU's uh, greatest, right? The greatest team of EU. Well, maybe not with this lineup, but one of the greatest teams of EU's history against... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I should hold myself back. But yeah, you know, right? You know. Um, there's not really other teams who have <clears throat> four of these little boys here. Uh, regardless, regardless, let's go into the draft and uh, let's just get right into it. Who can get an advantage for game number one? And so far we see G2, they've picked up the fierce duo that has so far wrecked havoc at this world championship. It's the Nocturne or Rihanna combination and so far no one has really fucked it up. Uh, not sure if it's like 100% win rate or anything like that, but so far it has really worked well. And uh, yeah, we see T1 then, they pick the Iskana and the Ari, right? Um, the Skarnab really good, right? Not only is it powerful, yada yada yada, but also it's like a match pick, right? They pick jungle, we pick jungle, so we don't reveal any more roles. Uh, this is pretty basic, but on red side people sometimes fuck it up and then they give blue side like the ability to counter pick, which like that should not happen. We pick the Ari and this, this is pretty interesting. I think there are some layers here going on, right? Because usually it's like you would pick the uh, Orianna here away, right? And also like Orianna is like pretty good for Faker, right? High priority champion. Um, but if you pick the Orianna here and they pick Ari Nocturne, sure, it's not like the same wombo combo combo, but like you can't leave tower. You can't go out of uh, your way into a side lane and farm some minions, right? Orianna is super mobile and like the Ari and the Nocturne would just destroy her. So maybe there's some layered thinking going on, right? If we pick away, they pick that and then they attack us and something like that. Uh, okay, yeah, and by the way, if we have Gragas, right? I think Zeus is not undefeated anymore on Gragas, but he is pretty fucking good on that champion. Um, I think he, yeah, I mean, I think he has like one or two defeats maximum on that champion. Maybe I missed something, but uh, yeah, that guy is pretty good at Gragas, right? Obviously has not been in the meta really, but uh, yeah, then we have uh, a, a Jax, obviously being picked up in second rotation as well, blind, okay. And Gragas against Jax, that's pretty fine, right? J uh, Gragas top lane is a super good lane neutralizer. Then uh, we ban like champions here, there, who cares really? We pick Jin, right? Obviously pretty nice. We have picked compositions already and the enemy champions are decently immobile, so that's that. And they have not elected the top lane tank, so we can be pretty uh, calm with that one. They go for Draven, Nautilus, right? To go really in. Uh, obviously Nautilus pretty good against uh, like Ari, right? She can dash whatever you want. You press R and it's like you, all the dashes in the world won't save you. Um, and well, Jin again also kind of mobile, but Jin is already going to have a bit of a tough time, right? Because there are lots, lots of people really coming at him. And I mean, Draven ult is still an ability, right? That you might not uh, have in your mind. And obviously, Hans Summer Draven, that's a champion he's really comfortable with. And we have Carrier Leona. <laughs> Leona here is obviously like okay, yeah, whatever. Um, like sure, the Tom Kench kind of could have like, could have been cool. And I'm mixing German with English again. It's like uh, what the hell. Uh, anyway, let's go into the game number one. I think uh, yeah, both teams are doing interesting things. Obviously, T1 we have uh, the Gragas. That's uh, like I think a first time for Worlds so far. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be good. Okay, on to the rift we are. So again, top lane matchup. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I expect nothing to happen, right? Maybe a swap happens, right? And then things change. But in the isolated matchup, like it's really hard to bully out of Gragas, right? That guy has so much sustain. Um, once he gets, uh, what's the item? Lost chapter, if he goes that route, which I would assume. Uh, once he gets lost chapter, like, he, it's like he insta clears the waves uh, like in comparison to most other top laners right um so there's not much really happening here in terms of uh, the jungles ah yeah g2 is the favorite yeah it's global power ranking g2 is the favorite here in this matchup and oh yeah that's first blood coming in for go 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 guma yushi let's go nice one and uh yeah we'll have to see we have to see anyway so no swaps though obviously that uh, thing that we just saw matters faker started e though uh so that's uh, something that might hinder him in his early laning phase but it should be okay right obviously oriana uh is quite good um uh, right and especially if faker has to start e it's going to be a bit of an iffy situation in the early levels but uh, we expect th good things to happen right and yeah, Gragas, I mean, he has his W, he has his passive, he has his E, like every ability, I mean, I'm a huge Gragas, like, fan, 
uh, sometimes the numbers aren't really in his favor, but his kit is just insane. He, uh, that's why in my eyes he's one of the like really really overpowered champions in the game. That uh, like if there's a spot and you pick him, like you're you're never going to say oh fuck, fuck that I have a Scragas. He's not helping my team. He's just so versatile with uh, all the things that he can do and offer for his teammates. Anyway, we have a gank in the mid lane. Owner charges through. Yeah, caps nice sidestep. Also sidesteps the charm. Or misses, well, whatever. Uh, but yeah, gets a nice chunk. Owner right already on the rotation from bot to top. So it's not really uh, that big of an opportunity cost. Sure, it's going to be a bit delayed in terms of uh, like clear speed against Yike, but that's always going to be the case, right? It's like Skarna is not going to clear as fast as uh, a Nocturne, so that's that. And uh, yeah, bot lane, it's going to be all right, right? Wave is pushing in, and uh, yeah, we just need to be uh, we we just need to be careful, right? I don't know, uh, Draven Jin. Um, I heard, I think it was even Han Summer uh, that uh, said like, years ago or something that uh, Jin versus Draven is. Well, good or rather bad for the Draven, right? Um, and I, I mean, I can't see it, right? Like he's out of your range, so you can't really uh, hit him with the access, right? With the strong trading patterns, with the strong AD that Draven can offer, right? Uh, and Draven obviously being like a mobile himself. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Here Faker uh, tries to do a very classic of like, well, whatever, let's see this gang first. It's going to be okay, right? Obviously with Yike there, yeah, nicely done. But yeah, Faker tries to pivot to the bottom of the lane to, uh, well, like, you know how positioning works, to control, or mind control caps into moving upwards. And we get a 2v2 solo. Now, oh, for fuck's sake, man. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 anyway, Faker tried to push caps uh, with the invisible line into the top side near owner and, well, Obviously that didn't work because Caps didn't fall for the bait, right? He didn't uh, position himself in the lane subconsciously. He thought about where he wants to be. And that was obviously on the bot side where his jungler was. So uh, nicely done by Caps there, but also a nice idea there by, uh, by Faker. Yeah, how does this work? Oh, he's not in turret range, even though he's standing right there. Ah, yeah, okay. I, I mean, I like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously here at this point, like the Draven has like so much damage and once the Aftershock and or the W of Leona runs out, she is just paper. And uh, yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. Anyway, Zeus here. Uh, uh, okay. Minions, let's go! Oh, 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 oh wait, owner gets hooked. But uh, he's owner, right? He's fine. But yeah, Zeus, let's go! Get both summoner spells off the Draven. And I mean, sadly, he already cashed in, so it's not stacks tonight. But hey, get the solo bolo, let's go! Yeah, yeah, your momentum, we've already dealt with it. Okay, so a couple seconds here before the grub spawn. And uh, yeah, looking good so far. Small gold leads here, small gold leads there. Only the, the real big one is obviously on Zeus. But even that one gets smaller, right? Because Broken Blade with the Demolish picks up uh, some plates there. Anyway, both top laners now have TP. And uh, well, flashes and so on, as far as I can tell, uh, are all back up again. So that's that. And yeah, we have to see. Oh no, that looks like a bit of a wombo combo that uh, does not really work well for us. Owner also low, but Faker gets the resets, gets the charm, there's the cleanse. Can Guma... No, he's reloading! Ay, 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 double kill for Hans. Ah, Bliat. Ooh, they TPing, they're really rushing this uh, here in the top side, right? They picked up the extra grab. Oh, no, Zeus got hooked. Not going to matter, but okay, so they expect the uh, extend the extra member for this top lane play, and maybe they keep pushing. But like this is a Gragas and Jun is also here, right? Mid lane is completely empty. Like we're taking care of the dragon. We have gotten the first blood uh, turret anyway. It's like what what is going on here? I mean, first of all, what is Zeus doing? But second of all, what am I watching? Is this League of Legends or like what the hell? Like, look at what? Like, what are they doing? This is like, as this looks like Fnatic or something. Like, who's playing? G2? Let me let me see. I need to see these player camps. No, that looks like Mickey X. Yeah, that looks like Mickey X. 
Oh, no, this is this Hansama. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, what am I saying? Even? Yeah, this looks uh, like this looks like carrier. Yeah, yeah. If you are in solo queue, right? Hard steel. Yes, like you go hard steel on your tank versus tank top lane matchup, and you just farm hard steel stacks, and you are having a great time. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's that's about it when this item is good, right? So far in pro play, like I think no one really went over like I don't know 300 stacks or something with that item. And I mean, like, obviously, like, base high HP is all good and so on. This here has ult again. Ult motherfucker into the turret. And hey, yeah, have fun. You're diving the turret. Oh, Faker missed. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we still get something done. And G2 committed all members. So, like, there's no cross map. Even though the execution was maybe a bit iffy. Not too sure about this 100%. Like, there's one team and they're getting absolutely destroyed, right? T1 obviously still needs some time, but they're picking up some good pieces here. Baker will get that turret. There's the TP coming in, but... Uh, owner? Yo! Ho, ho, the largest blast clone around. And yeah, Zeus in the top side. Like, sure, we only have one grub, but like, who the hell cares? I don't know, for some reason, Mickey is also like 700 gold ahead of Carrier. Like, what? How? What? Both have the same number of assists. Carrier even has more farm. It's like, I don't know. It's like probably turret proximity. But that's probably it. Okay, we're brute forcing our way in here. Flash, we get two people. And that stops the Oriana Nocturne combo from working. But it's still way too overforced. Faker here on the flank. Will we find Hansama? The answer is not yet. But now is the... Is the what is the result? That was such an... Oh, I yeah, yeah, Faker. I mean, he throws it in the middle of everyone and everyone sidesteps. It's it's okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's mid lane turret now gone. We don't need to overforce anything. I think uh, we could have yeah, even been more greedier. We can get another charge here from the Rift Herald. And yeah, T1. I mean, this looked so overforced. I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? But hey, they knew what they were doing. So uh, what am I? It's like, this look, look at this. Again, this is all dark, by the way, right? Because they have no vision here. It's like that's charge. But owner gets the Oriana. Denies the Oriana uh, Nocturne combo from one-shotting Guma. And that means Guma can't stay in this fight. And do you know what item Guma has? He has the static shift. So, uh, yeah, that's already like some nice damage. In this case, it didn't matter. But, uh, yeah, that was... Oof, man, if owner didn't catch uh, Goom, um, Caps there with the ult, this could have been an absolute disaster of a fight. <laughs> but, okay, worked out, worked out, we'll take it, we'll take it. Oh, wait a second, they're doing the Oriana combo on our Jin, and Jin is immediately dead. We get knocked, uh, we get the ult from owner. And let's see, maybe we can do something here in the aftermath. Oh my god, Zeus ult was disastrous. Faker here, forced out the cleanse by Hans. Not sure if that E even hit. But, uh, yeah, in the end, it's a one for one. They used all of their cooldowns and it still ended up being a uh, one for one. Here, yeah, let's see. We're going go on to Mickey again. I mean, it's an easy target, but just means that we have nothing really for the extended fight, right? We'll have to see here because, uh, like in terms of DPS, it can be a bit tricky here, especially if fi Faker uh, gets killed early. And here again, we use everything on Mickey, which is not really good. Sure, the Nautilus is not so tanky, right? We can burst him down somewhat, but, uh, they got Faker. They got the Faker shutdown and they cut also his Dark Steel stacks, which is not cool. But anyway, uh, actually Faker doesn't have TP and because death timers are based on level, he's like, oh, okay. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. We are 4v5. We are 4v5. Ay, ay, ay. It still works out because we are just that much cooler than them. Wait, how did he... Wait, what happened there? What, I, I, I was uh, just too confused. Anyway, T1 wins somehow, some way. T1, the greatest, number one. Woo, woo. Put your hands together for the T1. Let's go. Owner, 100 hard steel stacks. Absolutely voted. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't know what happened there. Like, uh, what? So first owner gets hooked over the wall or in the wall by, by the Nautilus. Then somehow they chase Yike, but Caps just dies. Like, I, I don't get it. But anyway, like, they have nothing here. They, it's just their inting here. They're really just donating overkills. That's just stupid. Which, uh, which makes me relatively sad, because I praised G2. I remember praising them last time. 
Like, but no, they're just, yeah, apps. Oh my god, it's a, it's a murder. Like, with a bad blast, Cone here again, doing a lot of work. And, I mean, hey, all of T1 really having a really great series. Carrier here looks okay, right, for, like, uh, on, uh, on the, what is it? On the Leona, not really his champion, right? Guma, we know, like, his gin is really good. And, yeah, same can be said. Hey, owner at internationals, you don't need to have any doubt. He's also playing one of the strongest, uh, like the strongest jungler maybe on the patch. Uh, Zeus's Gragas is a known factor. And yeah, we're just picking up an extra flash here, right? There's just really nothing. We actually have like th like 10,000 gold uh, on our uh, inventory right now. So I don't know what we are still like staying around here for. But whatever, right? 8 to 16, 7,000 gold lead. We have the Baron buff. They're kind of looking to stop our backs, but uh, yeah. Okay, who is that greedy motherfucker? Oh, Zeus. But, I mean, he's tanking up well, but... I, 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 I hate you so much, you greedy motherfucker. <laughs> you greedy motherfucker, man. Zeus, what was that? I mean, a faker triple kill. A triple kill, triple kill. Okay, Penta, Penta, Penta. Penta, Penta, Penta. By the way, um... Everyone's like who who actually is the best Ari in the world? Let let's ask the guy who maybe has a fucking skin for the champion. And uh, yeah, T1 absolutely slaughtered them. I mean, uh, it looked close at some points, but uh, it yeah, they actually. I mean, it's, it's 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 many things, right? It wasn't even really uh, like who plays the map better or something, which I kind of expected. But G2 just didn't absolutely fucking care about that at all, right? They really are just, hey, let's fight, let's fight, let's fight, let's fight, let's fight. And I I think that is absolutely delusional to think that that's the way you play against T1. I think that's one of the worst things you can do against T1. Trying to hand diff them, which, what? Like, T1 is a smart team. T1 is not, not stupid. They can play them out. And it, it improved, right? Coming into, like, like here at Worlds and so on and so on. That was one of the struggles, really, in, in the summer, right? But... Like what? Trying to like fight out fight T1? <laughs> Delusional at best. But yeah, I mean G2 looked horrible today, or at least at this game so far. Uh, like, sure some some things worked out, but absolutely greedy at times. And uh, yeah, I mean we have to give it for T1. Many also very greedy things going on, and uh, in the end it somehow worked out, right? This game. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it was not perfect, but we won, and uh, in the end, with both teams continuing the zack zack, it looked pretty dominant, so we'll take that one, I guess. Let's go, let's go, next game. Okay, so we're coming into the draft of game number two so far, looked good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot to say about this game number one, maybe we'll get a bit of a moment here after this. I mean, T1, the draft was really good, like, nice adaptation, again, the Ari pick, not giving it over, like, having it as an option against what, uh... G2 was trying to do and uh, yeah, I mean G2 they really looked like I don't know They didn't look like themselves. This looked like I don't know G like Fnatic or something, right? It's like with how they played the map. It's like this over commitment for top lane turret, right? Where T1 picked up a mid lane turret uh, like two turrets bot lane It was an absolute disaster, right? And then forcing that fight around the top lane in the turret like it was absolutely uncalled for, right? What? Then uh, like the Baron, right? The, the, the G2 we saw just a couple days ago, or whatever, right, when the last match was, they lost Baron, and then what did they do? They got mid lane turret, they pushed into a bot lane and got that, that turret, pushed in two wa like, waves of, on the waves of minions, and like to play against the Baron buff, right? Not doing the stupid, hey, I need to be there, I need to see the enemy team do the Baron, right? Obviously that doesn't mean you can never contest if the enemy team is doing Baron, that does not mean that. But... You know what I mean. Anyway, let's go into the draft. And again, we see Nocturne Oriana, and we see on the other side T1 with the response of the Ari. And this time, obviously, there's no Skana, so we pick up the Vi. And hey, are we complaining? We have Vi Ari, that's also a, a good duo, some say. And I mean, hey, they picked up the Nara this time, so no Jax for uh, the Broken Blade. And this time, we get the Jax. Ay, 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 ay. I'm not liking this one. Like, imagine what a Jax does for your team, and then compare it to what we just saw with a Gragas doing for your team. It's like, how, how is that comparable? How would you ever pick Jax in pro play, um, in, like, uh, in contrast to, to Gragas, right? Uh, and obviously there are, like, benefits from Jax, I'm not denying that, but no one plays the, like, plays the, the game 
so that these benefits of checks matter, right? I think that's that's pretty clear at this point. We have a Bans here in the support position. T1 obviously banning Poppy and Rel. Rel obviously being a good ball carrier and engaged champion. And a good champion for Mickey. And Poppy obviously, yeah, fucks us over quite a bit. On the other side, uh, yeah, Zaya to deny the impact of the Orianna Nocturne combination. And Braum because Braum is pretty good. Not sure why. Because... Hmm. Does Bra Braum does not block Orianna ult or anything like that, right? That's not how this works. That's stupid. And yeah, G2 here, they again pick up the Nautilus. And yeah, just like last game, it's a decent one, right? Nautilus always, as much as it's also the zack zack of the supports, it's always fine, right? You always have like some value, some target that you can ult, unless it's, I guess, five bruiser champions. But yeah, and Kaisa, you know how I feel about her, but this is a comp where Kaisa is like kind of fine. Because obviously, like you have all these people running in, and that's exactly what Kaisa wants to be paired up with, so she can end with them. And yeah, on the other side, it's Leona Jin again. So T1, they only changed top side, but kinda these were like some of their best champions. We'll have to see how this one manages. I think, uh, yeah, again, like not picking up. Uh, I mean, obviously, Nar versus Gragas is a bit of an uncomfortable matchup. Gragas is really good against melee champions, so like all the melee carries that you can envision. All these hyper carries, right? I don't know, Gwen, Fiora, Jax, Riven, especially Riven, right? Her e, her Q gets cancelled completely. So, like, against these champions, Gragas is really good against Nar. Well, not so much, but it's not that Jax is really, like, a hard Nar counter anyway. Okay, let's see, let's see. So, yeah, again, what do we can what can we talk about? Top lane matchup, we have seen it 300 times. Nar favorite at some points in the earlier stages. And then, I mean, the Jax is just going to do Jax things. We have to hope, really, like, put our hands together and hope that uh, <laughs> this, this is not going to be a team fight, Jax, but I, I think it has to be, kind of, but, but whatever. And then, yeah, the T1 bot side is pretty good. This time there is no Draven, so this laning phase is just much better. Kaisa's laning phase, I mean, it's just not great. Her, her early game attack wind up and all of that, it's just... Bleh. Okay, and another early gank by owner. But wait, wait, was Faker level two or something? Faker didn't didn't use E. Maybe I mean, understandable. Maybe he wanted to wait out uh, like for the flash. But I think like with owner hitting Q, I think he could have immediately then layered the E. But okay, I mean interesting. There it is the flash and well Faker now has to run 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 away because Yike is pretty fast here at this point. And yeah. I mean Faker good bluffing, right? Owner was nowhere close. So uh I mean if he actually ran into the enemy jungle he would just be dead. Yeah, okay, close. But uh yeah, I like what Owner is doing, right? It's like he's impacting uh, especially mid lane early on. And now I know already the haters are going to say, ooh, uh, Faker needs the help in mid lane, otherwise he's so bad, it's like blah blah blah. Yeah, like, shut the fuck up, man. Owner is absolutely destroying it, right? Look at this, high KDA, high kill participation, and everything, everything that you really like, like, Owner is doing that, and he's doing it well. Uh, absolutely, like, great what he's doing, right? Huh? Did we spot him? Oh yeah, I guess, yeah, on that word, okay. Mickey, uh, yeah. Unfortunate first blood. We give it over to owner. Okay. Yeah. Nice. This girly game or this game so far goes fine, right? We pick up the dragon. We're somewhat ahead in gold, not by a lot, right? Uh, but yeah, it's it's okay, right? Broken blade here. Okay. Did not expect this, but there's no ult on owner, so with the hyper movement speed, it's going to be enough. And yeah. Owner, owner, owner. But owner shows bot side, that means grubs are gone. But uh, hey, it was, it is what it is, right? Let's cope, right? Like, they can have all the grubs they want if they don't get to attack the turrets. Who cares? Faker here has flash, but does not have ult. Uh, yeah, nice sidestep. Here gets chunked a bit. How did that E not hit? Yeah, I mean, Faker here is like pretty dead. Unkillable Demon King. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Also, first Nocturne ult in the game, absolute disaster. Faker, uh, Faker recalling, right? And he has the TP, so if they actually go for a fight, he can TP in with the items, with the ult. Now, 
back available and uh, sure like they got faker slash but uh that's kind of about it for the positives for your squad there um, so far i think we can be decently happy with what we've seen from our t1 squad and i mean it's just going to get better especially obviously for zeus who uh yeah obviously is going to suffer a bit in the earlier stages here uh in this matchup but uh that's also about it for for the negatives because yeah look at this we're doing the the funny haha 2v1 and yeah we pick up a kill it's going to cost us uh, the dragon but i mean it's not an important one anyway and we take a herald instead so we trade neutral objectives get the extra kill on top of it just uh yeah t1 just uh, keeps winning here uh, across the map right very nice to see very nice to see and uh yeah owner obviously the big beneficiary of like a lot of these kills right three oh and one but that's good i mean i want my vi to be strong also we pick up a blue buff here oh owner picks that one up mickey here also just wanders in just wants to donate another kill honestly like mickey looks really bad today i mean yeah he like he had like a couple of these right where it's like I mean, I remember at the, like at the Baron, he also was the one that walked in, right? Oh, Hans, that's your cleanse, and there's Zeus. And uh, wait, owner took the Rift Herald in the enemy base. <laughs> Yo, these guys are so troll. Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> okay, okay, a bit of a funny one. Okay, a bit of a funny one. Uh, we'll we'll take it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be costly. Oh, actually, uh, Faker has TP to defend bot. Okay. So, yeah, it's not it's not terrible. It's a bit of a funny haha. Um, now, T1 here obviously is looking for a bit of a two, two for one in turrets, right? Because Oriana, with the six scrubs especially, is going to get that uh, top lane auto turret 100%. So, with these two minions here, we really need to make a lot of, lots of things work. But we brute force it with four people. Faker in the meantime. Yeah, making his way top lane, walking fast, and uh, yeah, there's no mid lane grave, so yeah, Faker took care of that one before it got relevant, and then he moved top. So yeah, it is like the, the the play that we wanted to do absolutely works out, right? We were looking for a two for one in turrets, and uh, yeah, now Caps also caught. Uh, which composition again plays the side lanes a bit better? Zeus uses the flash. That's a bit sad, but uh, he really wants to get that kill. Didn't even end up getting it. Picks up the Sonyas, ah, uh, the Seekers, ah, uh, yeah, 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 I cringe. Okay, we find another pick, and uh, there's the Orianna combo. It doesn't really work because Guma has a good flash. Broken Blade, though, escapes with a sliver of HP. Well, at least for now, Faker here thinks about going over the wall, but uh, yeah. I mean, so we get Mickey, so that's at least something, right? It's a pick on that guy. Broken Blade gets away with a sliver of HP, but uses his flash, and uh, yeah, nice. Three TPs that you have when you still want to handshake a fight against the like 4,000 gold ahead co uh, composition. And yeah, T1 here obviously like showing some respect to a potential like Baron here, right? No need to like do anything uh, antsy, but yeah, not really a concern. And T1 picks up the second trade. Anyway, T1 has total control over the top side, right? We're attacking the turret here. Would be nice if we had some grubs, but uh, don't really need it, right? Mid lane wave in a neutral state, Zeus is there, but he has the Zonias fully live, and I mean, it's not that T1 is like so far away. Actually, Faker with the TP, Nocturne all pop. There it is, the stopwatch. They're attacking Guma, but yeah, I mean, Guma feared. Guma is, yeah, poor Guma. Run, Guma, run. Yeah, and the rest of the fight, I mean, we don't have to talk about it, right? Actually, wait, what? We have to talk about it. What the fuck is happening? Wait, what? 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 I was, like, so confident that we were going to absolutely destroy them that I didn't even pay attention. And I just looked at Guma, like, being chased down by this Nocturne. Okay, so Zeus goes in here, gets Caps Zonias, and then when J2 turns to attack him, he pops his own Zonias. Owner goes in onto Mickey, but then pops the ult onto Caps. Right, Zeus here doesn't get the follow-up flash perfectly, and that means we need to use a bit more cooldowns onto Caps, but... Yeah, obviously with all the DPS and yeah, I think it's a bit more of, like a bit of the case of going in one by one by one here. <laughs> Zeus. <laughs> oh, actually they're looking over, not because they want to be funny, but they're looking over on the other people's screen for the uh, Nocturne ult. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, a bit of a one for one AD carry for Faker. Obviously, Faker is worth a lot more because he's Faker, but now let's see the extended fate here. Yeah, carry also going to die, right? It's a 4v5 situation here, right? Because look at bot, or can't see bot. But uh, yeah, obviously, our boy was in the bot side, and uh, a bit of a bad news is, right? I mean, we're two turrets ahead, that's not nothing, or that's not too much, but it's two turrets, right? If G2 picks up the neutral gold, not neutral gold, but the, the structural gold of the turrets, uh, this gold lead can be closed very fast. Now we need to be a bit careful to not go in fully Uga Booga just like that. I mean, Cap still has ult and he gets a good one. Mickey will fall down and can we get the resets? Can Oh, that's a Mega Nar. That's Onos GA also down. Yike, I mean, look at this. It's so fucking cringe. Look at these HP bars. Can he go for the 1v9? No, probably not. Ah, uh, this is so fucking ugly. Look at the HP bars. They're all so low. Oh my god. That's so annoying. Oh, for fuck's sakes. But also, why are we charging into this composition just so blindly, man? Uh, we're not tanky. <laughs> ay, 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 why are we throwing? Oh, I, I, I mean, I guess we have already thrown this game, right? I mean, it's not thrown out of the window, it's not lost yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we threw this game very, very far. Anyway, now we have three mountain dragons, but the problem is... Yeah, six scrubs plus Baron, and we... Yeah, what did I say about the standing gold, right? That's ugly. So, yeah, that's going to be a big problem, right? They're bursting open our base, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can't really stop their Baron push, right? Uh, luckily for them, they say stop, but they could have just went for the finish here, and I don't know who is going to clear these minion waves uh, on our side, but uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake, this game turned around, and uh, yeah, now we're down in gold, right? They picked up, uh, right? Like a bunch of turrets there, right? Two turrets, the inner turret and the inhibitor and all of that. So like much, much more gold. And now G2 with a sudden influx of gold is now 3,000 gold ahead. This is like a 7,000 uh, gold swing here. Yeah, obviously now uh, yeah, G2, they get uh, like some time here on the map, right? Plastered the map full of wards, right? Because they know like if T1 picks up this mountain soul, it's going to be a bit more difficult for them. But also, let's see this engage, or maybe not. Ono gets slapped against the wall, and there's Zeus with the TP flank. Hansama already, like, more or less dead. There's the ult, and let's just see. I mean, bro, look at Hansama HP, and don't tell me that this game is coded against T1. Anyway, that motherfucker is crashed down into the earth. And T1, I mean, we could look for a finish, and oh, we don't have any wars, and top lane does not look good for us, so, uh... Yeah, I mean, Faker's going to pick this one up, or maybe give it to Guma, right? He needs a bit more. Okay. Guma picks up the assist. And I mean, like, delaying this uh, death, actually, of Mickey is pretty good. It's pretty smart by T1. Um, yeah, pretty nice. Pretty smart from them, right? Now, Mickey is dead. I mean, he's a support, so it's not that big of a deal, right? He's just level 12. Again, death timer, scale with time and levels, as far as I'm concerned. Or as far as I know. Um, so he still will be there for the dragon. You throw, I throw, we all throw. G2 here, I mean, sure, they have the, what is it, the six grubs, but they don't have the Baron, so whatever it is. Hans, I mean, look at this. This is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, right, games? How does that guy live with one HP? It's crazy, it's crazy. Just, I mean, this bullshit, right, costs Zeus' flash, right? That's, that's the thing. Actually, I just saw my boy Reki there. So Reckless uh, in indirectly also getting revenge, and that's Mountain Soul picked up. Now T1, we just need to stall out. Who is that? That's Zeus. Can he get away? Oh no, oh no, oh no, it does not look good. Can we do something here? There's a W, he pops the E and will fall down. That's a shutdown, top lane minion wave looks bad, and this is also not too great. Ay, 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 without Zeus, can we actually like stop them from ending the game? Oh. Uh, the answer is probably not. So, yeah. Zero is down and two in herbs fall as well. Yeah, that's not going to be great. And Zeus is level 17, right? He's on a level 12 support, right? He's going to... Like, he's still dead. He's still dead. He's still dead for the next 20 seconds, right? And uh, top lane inhibitor luckily respawns, so that's something. But now they're on the Baron. Uma opens up the curtains and we are going to get vision. Owner goes in and gets the smite! Yes, man, that's my owner boy! Shoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, yeah, bad news is, I mean, we're still probably 
in a fucked up position because I mean I don't know if Zeus got the Baron so that's that and also owner lost his guardian angel so that's a lot of gold value also lost and it's still going to be a 4v5 and uh, now yeah g2 with double tp into topside uh yeah trying to look and attack the last inhibitor and there's not really anything we can do to stop that right the baron buff is going to be nice the soul is going to be nice but we're constantly in 4v5 situations here in the next uh like minutes here oh oh no actually who knows who i don't know right because faker also like is still alive there's the charm and there's zeus doing absolute god's work and that's uh yeah so I guess your shutdown composition did not work exactly. Ripperino for Carrier that he didn't get the 1v1 kill there. Hans is going to have a W up at... Okay, now. Then get the W onto Zeus. And uh, yeah, T1. I mean, this game is going to be tough, right? We need to win a couple more team fights. Uh, we can't just uh, run it down and tank, tank the turrets or something like that. Uh, we have the soul and we, we have Baron for a couple more moments. That's going to be helpful. I mean, all these minions coming into our base, and again, they just need a couple of auto attacks on the turrets, right? Uh, with the six scrubs and so on and so on. But uh, with the last couple of fights, we made G2 like, quake in their boots, shake in their boots, um, because they know. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, there's the TP from Faker. He does not have all just yet, but he TPs immediately onto Yikes. So yeah, it's not the greatest of plays. We are. Yeah, that was that was not great. That was uh, yeah. I mean, he didn't have that many like TP wards anyway. But uh, like that's Faker's TP. But that all. I mean, in the end, it achieves the goal, right? Of chasing G2 away. If you look at it, you can see it. There's one inhibitor now in mid lane, and four, three, two, one. There's the next one. So yeah, no more double super minions. Actually, top lane is the last wave. Uh, of uh, double super minions spawning for some reason a little advantage right in the xp department oh they're finding a hook onto owner and that's owner's flash gone for uh, fuck's sakes right we can't give this up we can't give uh we can't give this up we're going in there's the tp immediately one shotting caps that just looks like a done deal because han summer is also dead and uh, that has to be it uh, game number one i mean a in the end, it's a 2-0 victory, we'll take that, but I mean, for fuck's sakes. I mean, Yikes still is alive, oh, for fuck's sakes, no, 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 I mean, they have vision on this, owner. Okay, goes over, Yike has flash though. <laughs> ah, no! But yeah, fourth shot plus Guma. Okay, so the problem is we can't finish the game just yet, but Baron is respawning in 9, 8, 7 seconds, so it's going to be Elder plus Baron. Our inhibitors are all back up. Now the problem is G2 has double teleport, we have zero teleport, so they can do really nasty things with just stacking up and then just running through our base and like being fucking annoying like that. And that's sadly what, <laughs> if they do that then we have a problem, but yeah. T1 we just now need to, uh, I don't know what we do. These situations are always so fucked because like, I, at least we have, like we, at least we have two turrets left in our base. Here, yeah, watch this fight. Watch this, watch this. So, Carrier here, it looks like he's getting engaged, but he gets the ult onto Caps, immediate follow up by Owner, and they just absolutely take him out. Like, I mean, it's Owner and Faker, right? But immediate follow up, right? And that's the team one team fighting, right? It's just the snap decision and committing to it fully, right? Believing in themselves and in their teammates. And uh, yeah, for some reasons, there are objective bounties now for G2. Look at our fucking Nexus turrets. They have like they have objective bounties on Nexus turrets. That's something that you don't really see. And I mean, it, there's a reason for it because it's fucking bullshit. Anyway, we have still Baron for 150 and 50 seconds of Elder Dragon. Let's just see. Now Jin Ultimate is fucking fierce. Let's see what they do with it. They hit the combo, but not really because Oriana dies before she can press her buttons. And uh, yeah, I mean we are strong, we are cool, we are handsome, and everything that you want to say, but. I mean, Elder Dragon surely helps, and uh, yeah, G2 doesn't get to like do crazy things with their teleports, which I mean, luckily that has been the the, the case for this entire game that they like didn't <coughs> have a frog in my throat, Caro, Caro, Caro. But uh, yeah, G2 luckily was not able to play them up really well today. Um, we we had a, like a couple of blunders, right? And. This G2 composition in game number two, obviously, that's really sticky to deal with, right? The Oriana Nocturne combo, sure, it didn't work out often because, like, somehow, like, 
Like, I mean, caps got caught often, so, uh, so like, got caught so often, which is what we drafted for, right? He's just an Orianna, and we have, like, the Vi combination with the Ari. We have a Jax jumping in. We have, obviously, the Root from uh, the Jin. We have a uh, Carrier having a bit much better game on uh, Leona here in this one, I'd say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this was not a perfect victory. Game number one had its mistakes, right? And if, if this and that happened, this game, uh, like, game number one could have been much closer. And game number two, I mean, here we saw what happens when these fights go, like, uh, like the other way, right? G2 getting away with a sliver of HP. And obviously for us, like, for especially, like, we have Ari, right? We have Jin with statics, right? Getting these kills is super important for the stacking of the resets and so on and so on. In the end, the scoreboard says a clean 2-0. In the end, we saw T1 doing really well. And, oh, yeah, that's the... Yeah, there it is. I mean, I, now I need to put on my headphones and like enjoy the glazing of Faker Summer. And uh, yeah, here we see why that guy has an Ari skin, by the way. And uh, I mean, they might need to update it in the future when uh, there's going to be a fifth star, right? Uh, we're going to get an interview. I'm going to enjoy that. Hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to leave a like and subscribe, right? You want they're going to take a bit of a break because they've moved up to quarters already. Uh, we'll have to see who they're going to face, but whoever it is, you better be ready for T1 to come your way. Bye bye, my friends. Take care.